Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Nukem Duke here. And first off, I want a special thanks to Ubisoft for allowing me and giving me the opportunity and flying me out to the New York City red carpet screening of Assassin's Creed. It was amazing. I had so much fun. I met a lot of other YouTubers, other Twitch streamers, community members, cosplayers. Uh, the, I got to meet some of the actors and actresses. It was really cool. And I got to see them all line up in front of the screen before the movie starts. So really special thanks to them. And they also let, uh, let me do um, the Damien jump where the stuntman you see in Assassin's Creed does that like a 120 foot uh, fall leap in the air uh, into the ground. I got to do that too. Wasn't quite as high, but you know, it was still up there. So I had a lot of fun. So special thanks to Ubisoft. Now let's get started. You guys probably want, Mo Doug, does this movie break the movie video game curse uh, first off I'm gonna split this review in two ways I'm gonna do a non-spoiler which is this section and then I'll go into spoiler section I'll let you know when I head to that spoiler territory so did I like the movie it did it break the movie curse I want to say yes it did. Uh, the movie itself was good. I would give it a seven five between seven five eight. I thought it was decent. You know, uh, you know, if you go with the rotten tomato meter, with it. Um, yeah, overall, overall is good. Uh, just the only th one thing I really didn't like about the movie is how they treated the ending. Uh, I know me and a couple people didn't feel too positively with the ending, but then I know a lot of other streamers, YouTubers, community members, hardcore uh, cosplayers really liked the ending. They said it felt like very Assassin's Creed, felt like that's the way the ending in Assassin's Creed is, and it was kind of true to the game and the franchise, which is good. I'm all for like, you know, sticking with the, the, the franchise and the, and the, and the kind of dedicated to the gamer side as it, but you have to think about like, you want a movie franchise to do well starting off the gate uh, where a casual audience can go in and enjoy it the the way they did the ending I don't know if casual audience or or non gamers would n really like the way they, they treated that ending um, but we'll see I would I, a lot of people told me they uh, from the movie said um, who watched the movie with me said you know this is my second time seeing it after watching it twice I like the ending now that I, I understand it better watch everything and seeing everything I missed the first time with it so it, you you might like it better the second time I'm not sure I, I think for me personally I think the audience will split either you like the ending or you won't like the ending but overall the movie throughout the whole course I thought was pretty solid um, what am I thinking about uh, the best thing I liked about the movie was the Atomus, uh, what they changed about the Atomus in the games. You had the Atomus uh, where you lie, lay down on the ground you will, don't really see go into modern time. Oh, I forgot to tell you how, how close am I to the Assassin's Creed franchise. I played since Assassin's Creed 3. I know a lot of people didn't like that one with Connor. But I played since Assassin's Creed 3 and I played all of them after that one. And uh, I beat some of them and I haven't beat some of them. My favorite is Black Flag even though it's the least Assassin's Creed like. But it was just so much fun with Edward Kenway. Um, but anyways, I liked the, what they did with Animus. You see the arm. Uh, what it does is like it, it, it's, it, it's more active. You can see what's going on in modern time where uh, they have projections. So whatever's happening in the past, uh, what's going on with the person that's being in Atomus, you can see it in real life action. Like they'll move their body and you can see the projection of them like doing combat, climbing, uh, different nature. So that was really cool to see. Uh, and that was a great positive change. Only downside of it is I thought they cut too much into the modern. Let's say there's a cool action combat that's happening uh, in in Spain, right? In the past, and it's going on, and then it cuts to him fighting modern time in the projection screen, and they just, I felt like they did it a little bit too much, where I was like, no, go back, go back, I want to see what's going on there, instead of seeing a projection of it. But uh, overall, it was a great uh, trend. Uh, the bleed effect, I talked to some hardcore Assassin's Creed fans where they read the book, they played the game, they're like, they didn't like the way they handled the bleed effect, and some people were okay with it. Uh, I saw nothing wrong with the bleed effect as a casual fan, uh, but that's something that's a nitpicking. There are some Easter eggs there. Uh, if you play the games, there are some good Easter eggs for you. Then you can may recognize some Easter eggs. I won't uh, spoil it into you, but uh, it was pretty cool. And then uh, you see in the like kind, of, it's not. They say it's not a prison, but it's kind of like in the facility that they're in um with astergo is uh those are all like descendants of a previous assassin so if you played the games you would see 
some people be descendants from other characters in Assassin's Creed's game, which is really cool uh, to see as well. And uh, what else can I talk about? I don't really do movie reviews, so it's kind of hard to know what's coming to mind. I'm just saying what's on my mind without trying to be too spoiler territory. Uh, the, oh yeah, the movie is pretty serious tone. Uh, there's not like that Marvel f comedy where you have the action, the comedy, you have this uh, story to it. it. This is more like uh, more cut and dry, like a serious tone throughout the movie. So just keep that in mind uh, if you're if you're if you need some comic relief. It's not really there to for you, but it has that serious tone. Uh, the story flew was all right. Uh, you know, eventually. You know, it was a little bit confusing. Uh, if you're like a brand new person and don't know anything about Assassin's Creed, it can be a little bit confusing. But then uh, I believe as the story progresses, you, it starts to make sense over time and you start connecting the dots and you start understanding the, the universe. I, I thought the, um, the direction of the movie went well, um, where they build up a new assassin, then build a new universe. Don't tie yourself to a game and only like, focus on the character of the game. I think building your own universe of Assassin's Creed was the way to go, and, and that's what works, and it went well, and I'm, I'm actually really appreciative. So overall, I thought the movie was good. I think you're a hardcore gamer. If you're an Assassin's Creed fan, you should see it. If you're a casual audience, um, I think you should still see it to see if this is the, the breaks the video game movie curse. Uh, I would say it kind of does. Uh, you know that group of actors and directors uh, did previous production and movies together. So with that said, uh, I, I give a seven five out eight, seven five or eight out of ten. So that's what I think. Okay, now let's go on to the spoilers. Uh, warning: spoilers. I'm going to talk about stories. I'm going to talk about what happened. I'm going to talk about. Easter eggs. I'm going to talk about who died, the ending, and things, things to that. So this is spoiler warning. I'm giving you a chance to click off, or if you already watched it, you can click on it here now. Uh, okay. So Assassin's Creed. Uh, okay. The movie starts off of you get to see the, um, you know, back in the time where the assassins had to cut off their finger, and you actually got to see that real life where they had to cut off. The finger to be in the to be a part of assassin, so you can have your switchblade comes out. So it was, it was really tough to see, but it was like okay, wow, we're in this time period where you know you had to cut off your finger for your for your blade to come out. So it starts off like that, and then it starts off with um, let me see, uh, Cal Lynch or Aguilar, Cal Lynch uh, as a kid. And you see an uh, assassin killing his mother, and then he is forced to flee, hide, and then you know he turns out to be come like a criminal, where he's a murderer, and then he gets the death sentence, but somehow he did die, but he technically he's dead, and then he is taken by Astergo, and they need him because he's the only blood tie to blood tie to um, to the assassin back in uh, Aguilar. Who knows about the hidden ha apple? So the apple Eden it, uh, has ability of controlling free will. So the Templar wanted to, to kind of get the apple to kind of control free will to create peace and end violence. Uh, or that's what the main doctor uh, Sophia wanted to kind of end violence, end the hate, end the war. So to control free will, while the assassins were trying to keep away from the Templars. So he was only bloodline. Uh, that could go back in time so they can find where that apple Eden is. So uh, during that time, you uh, you know, he gets his butt kicked by Adamus since he wasn't really synchronized with it as well. And then you see him interact with some of the other people who are in the facilities. So you can tell the other assassins or ancestors of assassins, they, they already know what's going on and they're not like manipulated by Argo or Argo. Hopefully I'm saying it right. I know I'm triggering a lot of hardcore fans by saying it wrong. But uh, for some reason, uh, the Templars are able to convince uh, Cal that, you know, helping the Templars is a good thing. So he kind of wanted to go into Animus to help them find the, the uh, you know, the apple. And... Uh, 
and then the, sometimes the inmates try to stop him, uh, saying that he is doing wrong. Oh, and uh, the assassin that killed his mom was his dad, and then he's always mad at his dad, so they give him opportunity to kill his dad, but then uh, later through the movie, he realizes his mom asked his dad to kill her to prevent and to kill him, the son. The dad was supposed to kill the son, but um, to prevent the Templars from finding the apple of Eden. So then he, you know, kind of forgives his dad or let it go. And then he uh, goes back to the Animus to, um, to find out uh, where the apple was. After they found out where the apple was, they found he realized the Templar was corrupt. And then there was an uprising in the security guard security and they they um they attack the facility and then uh, he eventually joins the team of assassin or descendants and and this is where and then uh while he's trying to figure out his, uh what's going on uh, in the atom is while they're the other assassins taking over the facility he sees all the other assassins uh the, the history assassins so you see some uh well-known assassins like uh in there i believe i saw Ezio in the in the projection uh arno's there his mom's there i think i saw a couple other people i i'm not sure if i saw evie fry as one of the assassins there or not um i have to rewatch again and kind of take a still cut of it but um so the let's the Templar escape from being overrun from the assassins, and the assassins go hunt the Templar in the end of the movie, and this is all modern day right here. It ends up, you know, they're all like sneaking through. The, the Templars end up getting an apple, and they're having a big celebration, and the assassins, the who made it out from the facility is infiltrating through the security so you see them all going in like having small pieces to form the switch blades on their hands and they build all together and there's like a bunch of assassins in a room full of Templar right so then it ends up with uh Cal and Sophia having a talk of what needs to be done and that he needs to kill her dad in order to pre preserve free will because the Templar manipulated the daughter or the dad Jeremy Irons uh Rickon Manipulate Sophia to trick her like hey, we're gonna solve peace, but in fact he had an ulterior motive and then uh, Cal said I'm, I need to kill your dad and she gives him the go-ahead. He kills the dad Everyone panics walks out and there was no battle like the way the movie was gearing up was like it's gonna be a big battle showdown a bunch of Templars and assassin fighting they're all gearing up for this big battle and then and then it just hey, I killed the guy and they all walk out, the assassins all walk out, and they end the movie on top of the tower of them looking toward a future potential sequel. That's why I did not like the ending of it. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but, you know, this is, I may be missing a lot of things. Uh, you know, there, there was a lot going on. Uh, I, be, I may be missing something of why that's a good ending. Or I missed some piece of it, or I forgot about it and forgot to mention it here. So that's mainly reason why I didn't like the ending. Like the whole movie was solid until the ending, where it was supposed to be this big battle showdown happening. Ends up they snuck in and killed one guy, and all the uh, everyone just walks out, and everyone ran out. That's it. Overall, I thought it was good. I really hope they make a sequel. Uh, I thought the movie was good enough to make a sequel because I I am kind of interested. Um, so the one of the assassins that ends up walking away with uh, Cal uh, is a descendant of, um, I think Xiao Han. Ho hopefully, I'm just saying this off the top of my head. I don't have everything pulled up like I should, but um, uh, she is the descendant of the Asian female assassin in the Assassin's Creed Chronicles, which is really cool. And I got to meet her in real life, took pictures of her, and she's a martial artist in real life. And she told me. Uh, there was a, I don't know if they're going to do this bonus scene. It's like, she didn't know if she was going to be alive or not, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, she, this was her first time seeing the movie where it's like, uh, she says she shot two scenes. One where she's trying to escape the, escape the Templar, uh, Asterigo facility. And then she got shot with an arrow or she got shot and she fell down to her death. And the other one was where she ends up being on top of Michael building with the other assassin and looking toward future. So she, they killed off her character, but in the movie they put, kept her alive. So it was kind of cool. So we might see a bonus scene or secret edition scene where we actually see the other outcome of her not making it to the end. Uh, I got to meet Maria. 
the one who played the female assassins. Uh, I don't want to tell you about her outcome or anything like that because um, I think that's a super huge spoiler. But I got to meet the actress and uh, she was awesome. And you know, all the actors and, and actresses are really awesome down to earth. I met them with, in the after party and they were just very cool, calm, willing to talk to you, willing to take pictures and selfies with you. So it was good. Uh, so that's my review. Uh, overall, that was good. And I think you should see it. Uh, I think it sort of break the movie game movie curse. Uh, didn't like the ending, but who knows? You might like the ending. Let me know. Give it eight out of ten. Seven five eight out of ten. And special thanks again Ubisoft for the opportunity. Please do not spoil this movie to for anyone that hasn't seen it. Uh, the only reason I made a spoilers section in the end is to give you my opinion about the spoilers of what happened in the movie. And that's something we can talk about in the comment section to see what fans says. So if you guys are going to spoil in the comment section, say spoiler and then do a couple of spaces down and then where it says show more and then talk about it. So we don't spoil it too much for everyone. So thanks again Ubisoft. I had fun. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.